Hi all, it's Ziv from Elementor. Today, I'll show you how to use Elementor's Visual Form Builder, a powerful tool that helps you build complete and beautiful online forms in minutes without using any code. Use it to collect different types of data by using dedicated fields and integrate it with powerful marketing automation and CRM services to help streamline your workflow. You can even add advanced form fields, allowing you to create dynamic forms extremely fast. So let's dive in and check it out. Go ahead and search for the form widget. Then drag it to where you like. Let's start off in the form fields dropdown under content, where we can give the form a name and have a list of all the fields in the form. You can easily duplicate the fields or delete them like so and drag between them to change the order. Add as many fields as you want by clicking here. To edit a field, simply click on it and all its settings are displayed. Here you can change the type to collect more than just names, emails and text. You can even add a step field, turning it into a multi-step form. We'll soon go over all of them. Change the label and placeholder text over here. Make sure to fill in the label field even if you decide to hide it for design purposes because it's displayed in the mail you receive when someone submits the form. The placeholder text appears inside the field to help guide the visitor. I'll leave it empty for my design. Here we can set the field to be a required one and switch on the required mark like so, indicating it must be filled out before submitting the form. You can also control the layout of your form by using the column width setting to set the exact width of the field by percentage. Let's place the first two fields next to each other. Simply set their column width to 50%. Cool. As you can see, for the text area type, we can also set the amount of rows. I'll set it to 3. Each item also has an advanced tab where you can give it a unique ID and see the short code if you need it. And over here, we can change the input size, which sets the size of the fields. Now, like I mentioned, let's briefly go over all field types before moving on to the buttons dropdown. We already went over the text, email, and text area types. Let's check out the rest. We have the URL field type where the user can insert their own link, which is a standard field type that also includes the label, placeholder, required and column width settings. The tell type is standard too and allows visitors to enter their phone number. The radio type allows you to give visitors a list of options to choose from. Simply enter each option in a separate line. You can also set them to appear next to each other, like so. Select is similar to the radio type, only the options appear as a drop down instead. You can also allow the visitors to select multiple options and set the rows. Checkbox simply gives visitors multiple options to choose from. With the acceptance type, you can get a visitor to opt into your newsletter, for example. You can also set it to be checked by default. The number type is pretty straightforward. It allows your visitors to enter a number in the field. You can also set restrictions on what numbers are accepted. If you want to receive values between 1 and 5, set the min to 1 and max to 5. Make sure the label text makes things clear for the visitor. Next, we have date, which allows your visitors to choose a date in a special date picker interface. You can set the date range over here. You can also choose to set the interface to be native HTML5. Time is similar to date and gives the option to choose a time. Here you can also set the native HTML5 interface. The file upload type lets the visitor choose one or more files from the device storage. You can set the max file size, allowed file types, and the max amount of files if you allow multiple files to be uploaded. Next, we have the password type, also pretty straightforward. It defines a password field where the characters are automatically masked. And for best accessibility practices, adding the label here is advised. The HTML type allows you to add custom HTML to your form. Simply paste it in and you're good to go. You can also use dynamic tags for more advanced settings. Hidden defines a hidden input field. 
which lets web developers include data that cannot be seen or modified by visitors when a form is submitted. The step type adds multi-step functionality to your form, making your long forms less intimidating and easier to complete and submit. Check out our multi-step forms tutorial to see exactly how it works. OK, almost done with the types. Recapture and Recapture 3 help prevent spam by adding an extra layer of security to make sure your visitors are human. To use it, you need to add the API key in Elemental Integrations and complete the setup process. Lastly, we can add a honeypot field to the form, which is a hidden field also meant to prevent spam, but they don't inconvenience users like with the recapture. Basically, if a honeypot field is filled in, then the form is confidently rejected as spam because valid users can't see the field, meaning a spam bot tried to get lucky. Time to move on to the buttons dropdown, where we can choose a size, set its column width, and alignment. Next, we have the steps buttons. So if you are building a multi-step form, go ahead and change the button text over here. For the submit button, you can change the text, choose or upload an icon, Set the icon position and the spacing. In Actions After Submit, you can add actions that will be performed after a visitor submits the form. Choosing an action will add its setting below. For example, you can redirect to a certain page or connect to a third party marketing platform such as MailChimp. There are multiple options to choose from. You can even set it to open or close a pop up. Simply remove the actions like so. Next, we have step settings, which you can use if you are creating a multi-step form. You can choose a type and a shape. Lastly, we have some additional options where you can set a form ID and add some custom messages. Okay, now for the fun part. Let's start styling. In the form dropdown, you can set the columns gap as well as the rows gap. You can also increase the label spacing and change the text color. In typography, you can style it even more. Set the font family, size, weight, transform, and a lot more. Here, you can style your HTML field if you set one before. In the field dropdown, we can style it to our liking. For example, we can set the placeholder text color and typography. And here, we can give it a background color. I'll go ahead and drag the opacity all the way down so it's transparent. We can play around with the border color, width, and radius to really customize the look. Time to style the buttons. We can set the typography, add a border by setting the type and width, set the background and text colors for the submit button or the next button in case you're building a multi-step form. Then you can style your previous button as well. You can customize the button even more with the border radius and text padding settings. Next, if you are using custom messages like I showed before, you can style them over here. And lastly, play around with the styling options in the steps dropdown to really make your multi-step form stand out and convert much better. Well, that's it. Now you know how to use Elemental's powerful visual form builder and use it to build complete and beautiful online forms in minutes without using any code. Have fun playing around and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more tips and tutorials. Ciao for now.